Our guest today is Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum, who is one of the most quoted integrative pain and fibromyalgia medical experts in the world. He is the author of 10 books, including the best-selling From Fatigue to Fantastic and the popular free smartphone app, Cures A to Z. He is the lead author of eight studies on effective treatment for fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And Dr. Teitelbaum appears often as a guest on news and talk shows nationwide, including Good Morning America, Oprah and Friends, CNN, and Fox News Health, just to name a few. Today, we are discussing what you can do if you are suffering with long COVID. So let's welcome back Dr. <laughs> Jacob Teitelbaum. Welcome back, Dr. Uh Aloha from the Big Island Ward, and it's great to be with you and with all of our friends here today. For those of you who have fatigue from any cause, or long COVID, or CFS, or fibromyalgia, we're going to teach you how to get your life back today. How's Amen that? to that. Now, can you just give us the definition of what is long COVID? So... <laughs> We have, unfortunately, our academic institutions are failing us again, just like they did with CFS and fibromyalgia. Um, they made a definition that any persistent symptoms more than two, three months after COVID is long COVID. So if you have trouble smelling, if you have a, a little grumbly tummy, it's, or if you had a heart attack or a stroke, or if you have chronic, you know, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome where you're exhausted and crippled, these are all long COVID. 10 different processes and that so let's ignore that and let's do this if you find that you are exhausted brain fog perhaps with achiness and insomnia you'll see about 50 to 60 percent of people have trouble with restorative sleep if that pattern fits you and you're more than three months after covid or even after more than two you've got long covid and that's simply post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome. It's not a big deal. Um, it'll feel like a great big deal, uh, maybe even, even crippled in some cases. But it's real, really easy to understand and fix, unless you go to your regular doctor and would say, so, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. You're crazy. You know, so ignore them. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, because I've been noticing a little bit from uh, doctors. I've heard this from viewers and listeners. Uh, even friends, that uh, are doctors mislabeling certain medical conditions as COVID and just kind of throwing a blanket over a lot of these symptoms and just saying, oh, you got COVID and walking away? Some are. And also more of a concern is in the hospitals. Uh, the hospitals were getting paid sometimes 30% more for the exact same hospital stay if they put COVID somewhere in the diagnoses. So most doctors, since he had no idea, you know, you want your hospital to do well and have the funding, uh, or even if you don't, the hospital coders may just put in, well, possible COVID because everybody and your dog may have possible COVID. And even if you're in for an appendicitis, we don't know you didn't have COVID. Wow. Well, then let me ask you this, because, uh, because you're one of the foremost experts uh, on fibromyalgia. Um, does COVID lead to symptoms of fibromyalgia or does it cause fibromyalgia now that we have COVID among, among us? Ward, it, fibromyalgia is an energy crisis where you spend more energy than you're able to make. And then you trip a circuit breaker. It's like saying in your home, well, if I plug in too many space heaters on a cold night or too much too many electrical appliances or I short out the wiring, all of those cause the system to blow your circuit breaker trips. It's no one thing. So basically COVID is one of countless infections that will trip a circuit breaker and trigger fibromyalgia, post-viral, post-Lyme, any of a number kind of things. Many other stresses can trip the circuit breaker as well. Hormonal problems, sleep problems. If you, you know, if the boss, your boss decides to take on the form of the devil with you or something. I mean, and there's, you know, there's all kinds of stresses that can get you. Um, COVID is just one of them, but it's a big money one. So everything becomes COVID and anything low cost becomes attacked or ignored. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like uh, medical malpractice to me. It sounds like money, money, money. And, you know, I've never met an individual doctor or researcher at the NIH or uh, academician who, or politician for that matter who wasn't 
you know, peace of God staring back at me and wasn't a good, decent person. But when you get them in institutions like pharmaceutical companies, then suddenly all kinds of crazy, nasty stuff becomes justified. Our institutions are rotten, but they're full of good people. Yeah. Now, before we get into the protocol for long COVID, what are your suggestions for uh, prevention of COVID? Okay. So here's the thing. If somebody in your family, say you have a household of six people in the same house, if one person gets COVID, odds are only one other person will get it. It's not that transmittable. One in six people who come into close contact will tend to get it. Now you pack them all on a cruise ship or in the same room over and over, those numbers may go up. That's like a little floating Petri dish. But the, you know, it's not that contagious. I mean, it's significantly, but it's not like you, somebody looks at your wrong, who has it, you're going to get it. So why? Why do 80% of people not get it when they have contact? Because they do a couple of things. One, you want your immune system well fed. You want a good multivitamin. Most are not. I like one called Clinical Essentials. I take two tablets a day. It's really, really good and it will keep your immune system powered up. When it is going through the community, in other words, right now I'm not concerned with it, but once it traces Hawaii and it starts going through the community, I will add, and I would write this down, get something called Virapro. V-I-R-A-P-R-O. Then I take one once or twice a day just to keep my immune system really super powered. And I mean, I travel even during the whole COVID stuff. I was on plane lecturing all over the place and I just took my Virapro and I was fine. My Virapro, my clinical essentials. So that's number one, feed your body. Number two, rest your body. If you are sleep deprived, your immune system doesn't work. Get your eight, uh, some people find nine hours, whatever your optimal sleep is, get it. Number three, stay hydrated. Uh, the part of our immune system that first meets and fights this virus is the Navy. It works in moist surfaces, like inside the nose, inside the mouth. It doesn't work well in dry dock. You've got to stay hydrated, drink water. Um, anything but sugared sodas, just hydrate. You do those things and the odds are dramatically with you. And then if you do get COVID, I mean, when I, I did get the COVID once and um, what I took was ivermectin, uh, had uh, iced tea that I kept up by my bedside, uh, took the Virapro and the multivitamin and my Kindle, and I had a very pleasant four days and I was fine. Well, yeah, I I mean, I only I only got it once and I, all I got was a very severe headache out of it. Mm-hmm. And it lasted maybe five days and I was done. Um, and yeah, and you know, you mentioned ivermectin. Uh, we have, we keep ivermectin uh, at, in our home just in case somebody got a severe case. And it was re- very interesting that you stated that hypothetically, if there was a household of six and one person gets COVID, most likely only one other person in that household would get it, which really mm-hmm. follows uh, some of the information and research that I've read. And I just uh, recently interviewed an expert that brought up the fact that out of all of the groups researched in the areas of COVID, the lowest incidence of COVID was found in the homeless and the Amish community. Um, what kind of studies have you read in that area? Well, I haven't seen so much in terms of that epidemiology, but the thing is, the less close people are together in closed areas, here's the thing. To me, wearing a mask and walking around outside is silliness. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It doesn't work. Well, the way that COVID is spread is not that somebody walks up to you and sneezes in your face. When's the last time somebody turned and sneezed in your face? That's not how it works. And this whole six foot thing, it's, it's spread by aerosol more than droplets, blah, blah, blah. That's, I think that's nonsense. Outside, or the way that it works is you have people in a, in a room, in a close space with uh, who are breathing in and out and coughing the virus into the air. And depending on the volume of that space, as the virus particles build up to a, a certain concentration, then if you're in that space about 15, 20 minutes, then you may get enough viral particles to trigger the infection. Okay, so if you're in a great big space, like outside, 
where you can't fill it, you can fill the atmosphere. That's not where you catch it. You don't catch it on on planes um, because they have a HEPA filter that filters this stuff out. Um, but so indoors, I'm not a big mask fan anyway. I'm, I probably shouldn't even launch off on that. That's uh, okay. Think, I'm, but, I'm not let, either. Let me give one statement. I think that the current media state of mind is if they can scare people to death and make them hate each other they get power and money and control so what i find and what i find in life is that the universe has given me two choices love or hate love or fear okay that's right and, that's and that's I, it. I choose love. yeah i mean uh my gosh i mean because well even during the the pandemic and even during the uh, extended lockdowns, you know, we kind of make it a joke now that, uh, you know, six feet space, you know, six feet safe, five, five feet danger. So it really comes to be a whole lot of uh, silliness and stupidity in that area. Keep, uh, keep your body strong. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we spent so much time outdoors, like you said, my goodness, it, it kind of proves why the, you know, the Amish are always outdoors working the homeless are outdoors so the chances of getting COVID are almost nil at that point now for those that are suffering with long COVID, you have something called the shine protocol how does it help someone to recover from long COVID? so here's the thing this is an energy crisis whether you have chronic fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia long COVID. if you have other problems from the COVID, we said that, you know, even if you had a uh, heart disease or lung disease, that also falls under the broad long COVID. So if you have persistent symptoms of COVID from any cause, stroke, heart disease, lung, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, you want to turn off the inflammation and the free radical reaction. This means what I'm going to give people for three months is a special highly absorbed curcumin called Curamed, C-U-R-A-M-E-D, 750 to 1500 milligrams twice a day. And I will give that again, six to 12 weeks to shut down that inflammatory reaction. I will give clinical glutathione to turn off the free radical reaction. This is what's going on. It's like a forest fire that's still going through and it keeps going until you quench it. These two will quench it, so you really stop that reaction. Then, if you have the fatigue and the brain fog and the rest, our research has shown that the SHINE protocol, 91% of people improve with an average 90% increase in quality of life. That's a lot. And what you need to do for SHINE, and just write this down, sleep. If you have trouble sleeping, there's herbals like Terrific Z's Revitalizing Sleep Formula. Uh, I like the EP120 Sustained Release Melatonin. The smell of lavender will help you sleep. Get an eye mask. That cuts out the ambient light that helps you sleep. So much, my book will talk about so much that will help you sleep. H is hormones. You see low adrenal, low thyroid, low reproductive hormones despite normal tests. These need to be treated based on symptoms. I would be infections. Uh, once your immune system goes down with the COVID, Epstein-Barr and other viruses can escape. And then there's all kinds of things. The Virapro is very good for your immune system. Um, and when I was treating people, I retired after 50 years this, last November. Um, we, there are antiviral protocols that are very effective. Uh, nutritional support, clinical essentials. Uh, there's a wonderful, wonderful herb called HRG80 red ginseng uh write that one down to hrg 80 red ginseng uh get the chewable tablets because half a chewable tablet and the study we just did a study of 188 people with post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome who were crippled that would be a really severe one and 60 percent got better with an average 60 to 80 percent increase in energy and stamina it was quite dramatic that's what i took today that's if i have a busy day I just take half of a chewable tablet. Uh, you'll know within one bottle. I knew within a half hour when you know I first took it. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Get the HRG 80 Red Ginseng. Uh, their smart energy system that can be added to that in the clinical essentials. Those three together is where I start people. Uh, HRG 80 Red Ginseng, clinical essentials, 
and smart energy system. Um, so that's the nutritional part. Cut down sugar, increase salt. A few salt restricts this disease you crash and burn. Uh, increase water. Uh, but a key thing I should have mentioned is when you get the COVID, an ounce of prevention, do not try to work through the COVID. That's the recipe for blowing a fuse. Rest. Number two, ask your doctor before it, just to have the medication metformin, uh, M-E-T-F-O-R-M-I-N, on hand. Because research, really good studies have shown that if you take metformin and you begin it within five days of the onset of symptoms, your risk of long COVID goes down by fully 50%. This is, I, I tease, this medicine should be in health food stores. It's an honorary health food store thing. It's, it may cause diarrhea or nausea. So we start with a low dose, uh, 500 milligrams one day, next day, twice a day. And as long as they're comfortable with it, the, the gut's feeling okay. We take it up to the 1500 milligrams a day for 14 days. Um, it's, I, 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 I wish it was in health food stores. Is that kind of a medication? And that's Most a diabetic drug, correct? Poison. Yeah, it's been used for longer than I've been around, I think. Um, we know what it does. It's really safe. It's 10 bucks for the whole 14-day course. And that's why your doctor won't hear about it. If it was $500, <laughs> yeah. it would be on the front page for the New York Times and the Washington Post. And suddenly, they'd have articles like the gates of heaven are opening. Salvation! But if it's 10 bucks, <laughs> it's like, no! Well, I've heard, I've, I've seen studies where metformin was talked about as uh, as a longevity uh, yeah. type drug to even with diabetics could extend their life another five years. So there is some longevity anti-aging effects to metformin. Of course, anytime you control blood sugar in the body, you're going to extend your life anyway. Yeah, you're, you're, you're helping eliminate insulin resistance. And I don't take the metformin, what I take instead is the berberine, met X or regular berberine. Uh, which is very good at helping insulin resistance. And I like the Berberine Met-X. For those of you who have gut problems, get the regular uh, Berberine Met-X 500 milligram capsule. That way you'll know. And one, two to three times a day. Not just well it help the blood pressure, the diabetes, uh, the insulin resistance, but it also will kill bugs in your gut that don't belong there. It's very nice. It's selectively going, you belong here, you don't. We're kicking out the ones that don't. Um, if your gut is fine, no nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, excess gas kind of stuff, get the 250 milligram berberine Met-X, M-E-T-X, because those are high absorption. Um, so if you take one pill twice a day, that's 500 milligrams total a day, you get the same effect as 1,500 of other berberines. <laughs> so I know I just rambled. I got my college nickname, Na Rambling Jack, honestly. But anyway, um, there's so much we can do with natural medicine, with natural healing, uh, even just with prayer. I, I just, you know, that's part of when I'm treating people, I'm being in a space of healing with them. Well, know? what is your, um, what is your idea, or I should say, what is your opinion that when people watch the news media concerning COVID and they bring up all of these different names of variants, is there really different variants or is that just a, a media ploy? Oh God, it's, it's really important to have this because otherwise people would get bored and they'd stop watching and the advertisers wouldn't sell. How oh my scare, goodness. If, you're, if they're scaring you or making you hate your neighbor, turn it off. Amen to that. Amen to that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, you've given us a lot of great information on this long COVID. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a pen and paper handy on this. And we're going to give you a list after uh, my interview with Dr. Teitelbaum. So that way you can write it all down. So we'll, we will pop up all of those uh, supplements on screen for you. Uh, and to provide that list because they work. And, and doctor, you know, I'm one. I take clinical essentials. I take the HR, HRG 80 red ginseng myself, the Vira Pro. I'm a big Curamid uh, user. So they absolutely work. Now, with all of the talk about possible mask mandates and possible rumors of lockdowns uh, coming, we should just focus on uh, the pure prevention, shouldn't we? Just keep your body strong. That's how you 
avoid the COVID or sail through it if you get it. We talked about that again, you know, get your sleep, stay hydrated, take the clinical essentials and the Viro Pro, simple things. And then I would have the metformin on hand for if. Let me, uh, if you don't mind, I know mm-hmm. we, I threw out a lot of information. We have free information sheets, so we're happy to give out to people with the, if you have chronic fatigue or the you get dizzy when you stand with the long COVID or that kind of stuff. Um, my email address is fatigue, F-A-T-I-G-U-E, D-O-C. I won't answer long things, but I'd like I'll answer short questions most of the time. You know, I, th- I think people need a place where they have somebody who has a clue that they can ask. So I'll, if you give me your whole medical history, it's going to be no. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, so it's fatigue.doc at? Gmail.com. Gmail.com. And also for those that want more information about all the things that you've talked about, they can go to vitality101.com. Vitality101.com or for supplements and fatigue. E N like Nancy, D like David, fatigue.com. So happy to help with information. I'm going to do a shameless plug. My book, From Fatigue to Fantastic, is awesome. And it will teach you exactly what you need to do to get your energy tip top and your pain gone. And it's true, ladies and gentlemen. How long has your book, From Fatigue to Fantastic, been in print now? 1995 has gone through many, many editions. <laughs> and it is still a popular read. And ladies and gentlemen, if you ever need one big book in your uh, wellness library, Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum's From Fatigue to Fantastic is a must have. And again, you can head over to vitality101.com to learn more information about if you're suffering with chronic fatigue syndrome or need more wellness information, that is the site to go to. And if you want to ask Dr. Jacob Tottenbaum a simple one-line question, write to him to fatigue.doc at gmail.com. We'll have all of that information at the bottom of your screen. I'll send the free information sheets with that. (laughs) Ah, yeah. And as for those free information sheets uh, when you do that. And so do you send those information sheets back by email? Yes. All right. So ladies and gentlemen... So here's what we're going to do um, here at the here at the break. We're going to pop up the list of all of the nutrients and supplements, even the medications that Dr. Jacob Tottlebaum has given us today in this very important discussion in the areas of long COVID. So if you have been suffering with long COVID, now you're getting the real answers to that question and also what you can do to prevent COVID, just in case if uh, it starts spreading around, so to speak, uh, for the winter season. One never knows, but there's so many things that we can do to protect ourselves. And I will say this, the mask isn't one of them. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, doctor, I will tell you, you know, I am so thankful uh, to the Lord for you and that you and your family have been safe because you do live in Hawaii. So, um, we are very thankful that uh, all went well uh, where you live. Well, thank you. We got singed a bit, but uh, we come through it okay. The community is pulled together. The churches have taken the lead in making sure everybody's fed and has a place. And it's a, it's, it's a tragedy, but it's a beautiful thing. And uh, as I said I've, before the show, I know whatever God brings my way is a good blessing. It's never been anything but that. So I just wait to see how the blessing unfolds. Well, I want to thank you for always coming back to the program, always bringing us positive insight and great information that we can use on a daily basis. And many blessings to you and your family on the big island. Uh, Mahalo and to you as well. Aloha. (laughs) That's it. Aloha and mahalo to you as well. And ladies and gentlemen, head over to vitality101.com. And of course, we all have smartphones, so Go to the App Store, download the Cures A to Z from Dr. Jacob Tottlebaum. It's like having a full wellness library on your phone. So you don't want to miss that and you can carry it wherever you go. So thank you for watching and stay tuned. We're going to pop up on the screen all of those nutrients that Dr. Tottlebaum, as well as the medications that he mentioned uh, in our discussion today. So uh, get ready to write those down. And as for me, I'll see you next time.